Welcome to Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you aware and informed on everything that's happening in the world of faith and family films. We are here at Capernaum Studios as part of the Content 2021 Media Conference, where again, I keep running into new friends, old friends, and great friends. Right now, I have a great friend who I've known for a while now, uh, and uh, he's very, very, he's been, you've been very involved in media for a long time, haven't you? Over 40 years. <sighs> yes, Over Michael 40. Carnes, welcome. Thank you, I appreciate it. So tell us a little bit about what you have done over 40 years. Oh my goodness, um, we don't have enough time. <laughs> but I'll give you the highlights. Uh, a lot of my life, uh, I, g I came out of college at ORU with a degree in media. Um, I actually had a minor in drama because that's where we got our drama and our script writing. Right. But the technical side was the film and stuff. So that's, I came out of there because God basically said, and I was walking across the parking lot. I can give you the whole story, but it basically, at 11 o'clock at night, I was like, what am I going to do? You know, I was going to be a dentist. Can you imagine that? A dentist? I was going to be a dentist. After the first semester and a 1.2 grade average, I go, this is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> so are you saying it doesn't take a lot of education for what we do? <laughs> yes. <laughs> different kind of education. Different kind, different kind of, of education. <laughs> Technical and creative was my bent. Yes. You know, uh, drilling into somebody's teeth was not. <laughs> So, of course, I've drilled into a lot of racks, so, you know, but anyway, um, so I'm walking across and, and God goes, you know, at, at ORU at that time, you know, OR was one of the premier televangelists. Mm -hmm. We had a studio to rival ABC, NBC, yeah. and CBS. And so I was like, I'd done some stuff in high school and theater and different things like that, photography, and I liked it, but I always just did it for fun. But God showed me, it's called Baby Maybe is the studio that they had up there. He goes, see that right there? You can learn that and tell my stories globally mm -hmm. through media. And I said, oh, well, that's not really what I ever thought about doing. He goes, Michael, I told stories. I told parables. That's how I got my message across. Yeah. You have the ability to do it electronically and a few people, a little bit of money. And now who are you influencing? Wow. Thousands and thousands and millions now. So that's how I ended up getting started in this and have been in it ever since. Um, I went out to LA, I was going to be the video guy for YWAM and things changed but it got me out to LA and so I started painting sets and doing you know camera work and mm. grip work just like anybody should. Mm -hmm. Just start at the bottom and do whatever you need. Ended up working at a studio and they called it a stage manager but it's a glorified janitor you know <laughs> are the dressing rooms clean are the bathrooms clean are the floors yeah. painted and stuff but then they hooked us up with clients as they came in and we were like their man Friday we stayed mm -hmm. with them while they were there and so from that they found out I had some business background from my college summer days where I was at back in Houston mm -hmm. running businesses and doing construction in fact um, we were water wastewater business and the last thing I did before I went out on my own I bid all the chemical treatment for the Austin sewer plant which was the sewer plant was over a billion dollars wow. I'm 20 not even 20 years old wow. and I'm bidding a I think ours was about a 250 million dollar bid but they trusted me because I knew mm -hmm. I'm, I'm logistics you know mm -hmm. I'm like okay we've got to have this much to do this which is what a producer mm -hmm. right right so I'm sitting there counting all this and that was the last thing I did so the studio back in LA figures out hey this guy knows a little bit more than how to clean a toilet and how to paint a floor so they lost the salesman and said hey come on up and, and just help help us sell and so I did and then really got entrenched in what was going on in that world mm -hmm. then they lost their general manager and the owners came up to me, the Christian owners, and uh, it's one of the largest independent stages even to this day in LA, in Culver City. He said, you know what, we wanna do something a little different. We wanna have a big marketing team, but we need somebody to run the day to day. So we're gonna create a position called Vice President of Sales and Marketing. Mm -hmm. So I literally went from cleaning toilets and painting floors Within three months, I was the senior vice president of sales and marketing at one of the largest independent stages wow. in LA. Wow. And that is where I got my education. And as you've heard me teach a little bit, mm -hmm. I encourage the young ones to listen. Yes. Listen to the guys with gray hair. 
I listened to, I don't tell this a lot in the, in the world, but since we're doing this, I got to sit and listen to Steven Spielberg, Blake Edwards, Robert Wise, John Houston, Abby nice. Singer, Joe Pitka, I mean, <clears throat> Howard Kazajian. These are the people that kept coming on our lot. And it wasn't, I was no longer cleaning toilets, I was a suit. So I was interacting with them and sitting and having coughing and listening to them. That's where I got a lot of my real education. Mm -hmm. When you sit and listen to that level, not that they're any, they put their pants on like you and I, but they've just done it so right. often, it's like, how do you do it? So from there, uh, I left that after a while because I wanted to get back in production. So I went from doing that, back in my jeans and t-shirt, painting sets again just because nobody really knew my producing mm -hmm. skills or directing skills. But over time, I came to, El uh, to Nashville, um, doing off and on, did a lot of commercials, a lot of industrials, some B films, things like that. But after my second child, I was like, I'm, I'm in Nashville. I'm going to Nashville. Uh, there was a production job there for me, and uh, I got there, and then there wasn't a production job. It went away. So I now have got a young family in Nashville, no nobody, and I'm starting all over again. Wow. So, and at that time, you don't take your LA reel and go to the good old boy network and mm -hmm. go, hey, I'm from LA, look what I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't doesn't, like that. Doesn't fly over well. Well, you've confirmed a couple things for me. One of them is <clears throat> that what we do is definitely a calling from God. Absolutely. Okay, so that, that's the Absolutely. First thing. The other one is that sometimes we have to do things that are not what the calling ultimately is. But it leads us to that and it teaches us things, you know, and, and it might be completely different than what it eventually will be, but it's all little lessons or little uh, education we need to have that is going to prepare us for the final, um, you know, completion of our, of our uh, calling, of our purpose. Uh, and we may be kicking and screaming going to do it, but we really need to do it. And I think that's one thing that young people le do need to learn is that, uh, you know, you may not like what you're doing right now, but if you are really listening to God, it's part of your journey. So, that's right. That's right. And your journey led you to eventually Win TV, which we're going to talk about in the next segment. So we'll sure. take a little break, then we'll come okay. back and we'll talk all about Win TV. All right? Sounds good. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. This is Holly on Hollywood. Hi, I'm Holly McClure with a Holly on Hollywood movie review. Let's take a look. Legend has it there is a tree in the Amazon that possesses unparalleled healing powers. And the arrowhead is the key to unlocking it. Stop her! Hello. Uh, just wanted you to know this has been mislabeled. <laughs> Shipping outlets. Jungle Cruise stars Emily Blunt as Dr. Lily, who hires Frank, the Rock Johnson, to guide her and her brother down the Amazon River in search of a mythical tree of life. They are pursued by a villainous German prince who is also searching for the tree, and a group of creepy Spanish conquistadors back from the dead who are searching for the petals to reverse their immortal curse. Jack Whitehall, Jesse Plemons also star. The PG-13 fantasy adventure has lots of action, life-threatening situations, several fight scenes, CGI snakes, mild language, a tense, almost drowning scene, creepy CGI conquistadors that may be too scary for little ones, explosions, fights, and chase scenes. I laughed out loud at The Rock's jokes and funny puns, a nod to the Disney ride that added charm to his heroic skipper. Blunt is perfectly cast as a smart and brave doctor on a historical mission, going against the 1916 cultural norms by leading the expedition, wearing trousers, Frank calls her pants, and fighting bad guys. Guys. The chemistry between the two makes the story all the more compelling and will have you rooting for them romantically. Whitehall is hilarious as the wimpy brother who proves otherwise when pushed around and the three become quite the team. Jungle Cruise is an inter entertaining family film with a unique story, strong characters, positive role models, beautiful scenery, and interesting plot twist with a happy ending. I cannot swim. You booked a river cruise and you can't swim? The price just went up.
Welcome back to Fate on Film, coming to you from Capernaum Studios as we partake in the Content 2021 Media Conference, which if you've never heard of it, check it out. The website is there underneath there. Uh, uh, and uh, if you have been here before, you didn't come to this one, make sure you come to the next one. Uh, so we are here with Michael Carnes, who uh, again has gone through a journey that sometimes felt like wasn't your calling, but yet you you understood that it was, well, at least you do now. I do now. That it yeah. was part of what was going to prepare you for really this, Win TV. That's right. Tell us a little bit about Win, Win TV. TV. Well, Win TV came as a compilation from Content 2020 actually meeting other peoples mm. that wanted to do network. As you know, there's a big garden out here that's beautiful, the, yeah. the Creation Garden, yeah. and they have a Noah's Ark replica. Upstairs is a tavern that they built for the Washington's Armor set. Mm -hmm. So all of these people that were talking about networks, God just said, all these 40 years, you've run networks, you've run studios, you've built studios, you get these guys together and help them do what they want to do. And as we talked, we're like, let's just put it under an umbrella of a large network and start creating channels. So in the top of Noah's Ark, we started World Inspirational Network. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be modeled much like a PBS in the sense that it's viewer-based, donor-based, and membership-based. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be a subscription fee, not one subscription fee. So the um, uh, Chinese fisherman could watch you know, your show on his iPad if he wanted to. So that's kind of where we want to go. And there's revenue streams from, again, as you said, the connecting the dots and the time. The business side of me goes, all right, if we did this this way and changed it this way, we have a model now that producers can actually make money with their shows. Mm -hmm. Channel owners, which is what we're most concerned about, which people don't get, and we'll talk about that in a second, they're the ones that are going to consider the programs. The network's not going to consider the programs as much. We care about the channel owners mm. and whatever subject they want. If they want to do a women's Christian channel, you know, that's women's teaching and about different things that go on in women's lives, mm. that channel owner is going to be the one looking for and managing the programs on that channel. Nice. So if we get somebody to tell us that, hey, I got this women's program, we're going to go, hey, you need to talk to Jane because she's the one over that channel. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be funneling people that way. And one of the exciting things, it's a proprietary software that you cannot be canceled uh, technically because we're not tied to big tech. Mm -hmm. We have server farms connected around the world that aren't tied. I'm not going to name names, but any of the big tech that has been canceling, mm -hmm. we're not tied to those at all. We're independent okay. servers around the world, not the nation, around the world. So this is a global network to reach out and just, we're, well, it's the Great Commission. Yeah. We're going to be able to, exactly what you're doing here, we can go out and fulfill the Great Commission going to all ends of the oh, earth. Yeah. You know, And if you could do it with free TV instead of, this is great yes. TV, but i got to subscribe. Yes. And nothing wrong with that model, and there's yes. people out there doing it, and it's great. But, you know, again, I want, I want a Palestinian sheep farmer to watch their right. favorite show. And you mentioned a membership, which yes. will have a fee, but it's not a subscription fee. It's right. really a membership fee where people are, in essence, funding this missionary work. At church, we give money to send missionaries to Africa, to right. you know, wherever it is that we send a missionary. You, in essence, are sending out missionaries through all these channels, and the people that are being ministered to don't have to pay, but those of us who want to fund that missionary work, that's where the membership is, right? You hit the <laughs> nail on the head, and I appreciate it. And you know what? It's not a thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. It's wow. five ninety nine a month. Five ninety nine a month. Five dollars and ninety nine cents a month, and anybody can join and be a part of the foundation yes. of Win TV and say, "Hey, I believe in this ministry because it's a ministry." I've had three people want to buy this already. It's not even launched, and I have three people want to buy it. I go, "It's a ministry. It's not a for profit for right. sale company." Uh, and so, how can people? at least get started now and follow you, maybe start uh, their memberships. Right. Well, the big thing is www.wintv.world, www.wintv.world. And don't even Google it because we don't have the HTTP yet because mm -hmm. we haven't launched. Okay. But it's kind of like a private web page. They can get on there. There's contact information. There's donation pages. We're with the Signatory, which is a big Christian foundation that manages high net worth individuals. Mm -hmm. So if you've got businesses to sell, stop dividends you want to give those all can be brought into the signatory and we can help you deal with your tax write-off through that all right 
Well, uh, who knows? I may have a channel to launch on your. I want a channel <laughs> from you. I want one of your channels. Well, thank you for taking time to come and share with us a little bit about your life story and, uh, and of course, uh, this new uh, ministry that you are involved with. I know that there's a lot of stuff going on, and you, you're one of the you're one of the main speakers and panelists and all kinds of I'm things here at Content Twenty One. Uh, so I won't hold you up too much longer. All right, all right. I appreciate you. God bless you. Folks, don't go away. We're going to be back with another update from Holly McClure. This is Holly on Hollywood. Hi, I'm Holly McClure with a Holly on Hollywood movie review. Let's take a look. Let me give you some advice. You can't care about anyone else. Everyone else is an obstacle. Cruella is the 1970s tale about an orphan girl, Estella, whose mother died when she was young. She steals to survive on the streets of London with childhood friends Jasper and Horace. Estella has a talent for fashion design and eventually becomes an apprentice to her idol and mentor, Baroness von Hellman. She eventually becomes famous for her own designs until her past is exposed. Estella becomes Cruella, seeking revenge on the Baroness and all who betray her. In a twist of fate, Cruella uncovers was a dark secret that leads to the truth and forever changes her future. Emma Stone and Emma Thompson star. Parents says PG-13 is well-deserved. Although physical violence is played for comedic effect, there are mature themes and situations which make it more for teen adults than children. A mother's death is partially seen on camera as her child watches. Cruella escapes an attempt to murder her, which causes her to take on a darker side that seeks revenge. And while there's implied violence and murder, there isn't any gore or scary parts. Stone and Thompson play their sinister roles with wicked humor, but it's Stone who brilliantly transforms the animated Cruella into a person with a backstory, making a hero out of a criminal. Corelli is visually entertaining with glamorous fashion, brilliant art design, and a soundtrack loaded with iconic music from the 1970s. Oh, and dog lovers, you don't have to worry about the coat. She stole my dogs. <laughs> I guess you must hate her. She has made it me or her, and I choose me. Don't worry, there's lots more bad things coming. Perhaps. Remember to choose your movies wisely. Perhaps. Welcome back to Faith on Film to one of my favorite segments, which is where we get to talk about Hollywood and find out what's happening in Hollywood. And of course, who better to tell us what's going on in Hollywood than my friend Holly McClure of Holly on Hollywood. Holly, I, I keep saying so many Hollies. Holly McClure of Holly on Hollywood. <laughs> Holly, how are you? <laughs> doing great, Isaac. I'm doing great. And it's always good to be with you. Thanks. This is a fun segment. I love it. It is. It is. It's I... fun to talk about what's out and let people know. Yeah. And uh, they're in theaters and then streaming as well mm -hmm. there are a lot of family friendly films out right now which is always good to know you know it's good news that there's lots for parents to see and and yeah. uh, good movies out there some of them have been out there for a while but um you want to talk about them uh yeah but, but you know you said something interesting that there's a lot of family movies now is this sort of a new trend uh, or has it kind of always been family films and for some reason we don't know about it? Uh, I, I think I think because of COVID and because uh -huh. of because of so many people being home, you know, studios mm -hmm. realize you better get the biggest demographic and that is uh, attentive children, you know, that were home as well as, as adults. And I think because of streaming and because of that, it's that has become um, kind of the trend, especially over the holidays. And January and February have traditionally been like that. Mm -hmm. Now, as you start getting into um, April and May, you're going to see more of the action adventure films for summer. So we'll be seeing all those okay. come out and more of the adult films and you know a broader range. But right now, especially, I think just this mm. time of year, smaller films and family-friendly films. But there are a lot of films that have carried over since 
Christmas. I mean, Sing 2 has been out. Sing 2 is is over $300 million now and climbing and still going. And in fact, they're, um, I love it because they're even talking about a Sing 3 now because it's so popular and has done so well with audiences. Wow. So that's one of those that, you know, um, I remember Matthew McConaughey stars Reese Witherspoon, Scarlett Johansson. Mm-hmm. And Garth Jennings, I interviewed him. In fact, we ran it on the show on Faith on Film, the interview mm-hmm. that I had. And he said, well, we'll see what happens. And if it does well, we'll go with Sing 3. Well, I guess Garth is pretty happy because now they're going to Sing 3. <laughs> so that's good news. Um, Encanto. Encanto, uh, yes. that is still huge in theaters. And it's got, you know, the popularity of the songs. They're even hearing... Um, it, top billboard charts for the songs so that's good news that you know that movie's still out there in kanto and that is a a gives a disney of course it's the 60th animated film i love that the 60th one so that they're having huge success and like i said you know do you know i know you know you said you went to that movie with your grandchildren i think in the bruno song <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. We don't talk about Bruno. It is like the biggest song. It's on Billboard charts. So that's wow. kind of interesting. Yeah, that it's still that it's made so well. And that again from Christmas still in theaters, still doing mm-hmm. well. So they're showing good with that. Um, there's a small movie with Dennis Quaid and Queen Latifah called Tiger Rising. It's got some more mature themes about a boy losing his mother and things like that. But bottom line, um, it's got some warm, funny moments too, and then an interesting ending. So uh, it may be not for little ones. It's not a kiddie film, but for older, mature children, I think they'll enjoy it. Hmm. Now, <clears throat> I know um, I, I totally, The Passion of the Christ. Uh, Mel Gibson. Yeah, Mel Gibson. I know he's coming out with a uh, another faith-based faith-based movie what can you tell us about that one that movie i was going to talk about in a little bit um it's called father stew and uh definitely a film that is going to be i was going to come out because only because it's coming out in april and it's not really hitting right now with theaters but father stew is mark Wahlberg and mel gibson and they're starring in this true story based on father stew who was a true character he was a boxer and then he went to hollywood to become a movie star and well when that didn't well he had an almost fatal accident and death accident, and he became a priest. And so the story is about that. And of course, the Catholic faith. faith. Now, Mark Wahlberg did it with Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson's wife, well, can't say wife, girlfriend, Rosalind Ross. They've had a child together and they live okay. together. Anyway, <laughs> he, she directed it. She directed it. And oh. Mark was saying how it was an interesting because she did mm-hmm. direct this film. And it's one of her uh, two or three director features. But... I'm really excited because Mark said his faith was so strengthened after not only before playing this role, but that's why he wanted to play the role because he realized how important Mm. it was. He took his kids to see him remove his tattoos because he had tattoos and he didn't feel that was right for the, what the Bible says about tattoos. So he had his kids watch him get his tattoos removed. Mark Mark, Mark Mark got his tattoos removed? Mark Wahlberg, <laughs> the star of this movie, you know, I wow. mean, I remember him from his uh, underwear days as uh, right. and Marky Mark and, you know, um, you know, making the commercials for Calvin Klein's. But, you know, now, yeah, he it said his faith was really affected. And so he's even had stronger faith since making this movie as well. And that's why he wanted to play this role so much as Father Stu. And of course, after Father Stu became a, a priest, um, he won many people to the Lord because of his testimony and because of what he could share, what had happened to him. The real father, Stu, passed away, I think, in 2014. He was 50 when he passed away. He died of a, a terminal illness. But this is the true story of his life. And yes, Mark Wahlberg stars. Hmm. It's going to come out for Lent. So in the middle of April, oh, it'll okay. be coming out. Yes, yes, it'll be coming out for Lent. So they're excited about that. And Mark yeah. has another movie that's out, Uncharted. It's a PG-13 film. He's starring with Tom Holland, Spider-Man. Many of you may recognize Tom Holland as Spider-Man. And it's a real fun adventure. It's basically these two guys are going after a treasure 
and uh, the the journey takes them i mean to literally buried treasures sunken ships mm -hmm. antonio bandera stars uh, brian cranston stars with them the bad guys and it's based on a game a video game so they took the video game and made it into a movie and that's why a lot of kids are going to like it a lot of teens and adults who played that movie will like it uh, the game will like it again uncharted and it's a pg-13 so we're seeing a lot of movies come in at PG-13, again, right. trying to get families back in the theater. These are This is an effort for theaters to try to get families back in and not just streaming and staying at home. So uh, th there's a concerted effort with th theaters right now, Isaac, because they're very concerned. They lost a lot of people coming to the theater mm -hmm. because of COVID and otherwise. But I think, and you may, I, I, it'll be interesting to see what you think too. I think people are ready to go back to the theater they're ready to get out of their houses yeah. and start living again and doing what they used to do and going to have popcorn together as a family and enjoying family films. So I think we're going to start seeing theaters get bigger and bigger audiences as more of the, you know, COVID mandates are released. Do you think that Hollywood is going to stay into this trend of maybe doing more family type movies? I would hope so, because this is their box office. This is where they're making it. Now, you know, we have we saw, for instance, talking about our friend Cindy Bond, who did the movie Redeeming Love, mm -hmm. and that was PG-13. And again, it wasn't for family, but it was for older teens, mature teens to adults. Um, they've made $10 million now so far. It's been out several weeks. But, you know, that she was hoping to do better with that. But that's an example of, you know, a faith-based movie that, a lot of people disagreed with, but you know what, Isaac? A lot of people loved. Uh, um, Francine Rivers, who wrote it, said she's been getting letters and testimonies of people whose life mm -hmm. has been changed because they saw this movie. And and literally, they said we walked out, they were in tears walking out and their life was changed. And a lot of them are going back a second time and taking a friend or a girlfriend or someone mm -hmm. they know who's had those issues and going back to see it with them. So I contend that um, keep watching it. That movie is yeah. doing good. Well, we did, of course, two weeks ago, we did uh, an entire show, you and I, did, uh, about the, you know, just kind of that whole uh, controversy that, that the movie has, has uh, generated. And after the show came out, I actually started getting a few e emails from people. First of all, they were appreciative of, of our conversation. Uh, and some of them even said, you know what? I haven't seen it. I wasn't thinking of seeing it, but I think I'm going to go check it out. So I think we did a little bit of good there, didn't we? I think we did. Uh, I think we did. And, and I even remember you said you had a comment if someone said they weren't going to go see it. Yeah. But because they saw our show and talk about yeah. it, they decided to go see it. Yeah. And I, I mean, I know you mentioned that, but... I, I want to reiterate that that's a huge that's what your show does that's the importance of what we do yeah. we tell people what's about we tell people what's there we get li give them information of yeah. what it is and then you can discern for yourself because you have the yes. holy spirit in you as a christian yeah. you know every viewer should have that spirit and know okay you should be discerning for yourself yeah. some people it's language they can't watch a movie with language some people mm -hmm. it's sexual situations some people if it's in moderation they can understand and they can filter yeah. because it doesn't affect so everyone's different in the way that they view and watch films and, and the way that it affects them. And that's what this show is for, is to inform them and then let them yeah. make the decision for themselves. Well, thank you, Holly. Folks, if you want to write Holly uh, a note, uh, you can do so by writing faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. You can also write me, but I'm not as important. Holly's the one you want to hear from. So <laughs> write Holly at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Holly, thank you again, and uh, we'll see you again next week, all right? Thank you. Uh, good to see you too. All right, folks, take care.